Good day and welcome to Coffee with the Supervisor and my two special guests are people I know very, very well. We have Michael Agurcio, who serves on the town board with me, representing the 4th District, doing a great job. Thank you. Good morning. And Dominic Thorne, who was elected last November in the 7th Legislative District in a major upset. And he has come in and hit the ground running from day one. I remember the Thursday after the election, there was a meeting up in quorum at a, a minister's behest on ways that he, his church, and members of his church could improve the community. And both Michael and Dominic and Victoria was off in the shadows, uh, <laughs> uh, were there. And we sat and we listened. Mm -hmm. And uh, these two gentlemen have worked very hard to get a hold of some of the issues out there. One of the first issues that Dominic has asked is the bus stop. At the Home Depot, and I'm going to let you talk about that a little bit. Well, you, you know, uh, first off, thanks for having me, Supervisor. The bus stop, that particular bus stop next to Home Depot, was riddled with prostitution and homelessness and, and, and drugs for over 30 years. It's been a problem a long time. And one of the things I recognized as soon as I came in, and as you rightfully said, right after the election, I was at a meeting almost the next day for that area, is you have to make it safe for those folks that do need mass transportation, right? They do need to get that to the doc's office and the nurses. Use the buses. Use the buses, yeah. You, you have to be able to do it safely, though. Right. You had a number of people, I would say at least a dozen people, that hung out at the bus shelter mm -hmm. that had no intention of ever riding the bus. Never wanted to get on the bus. Nope. <laughs> it was just an area for them to conduct, uh, well, we'll say business. Uh, certainly not legal business. Okay. Uh, so we, we so have, drug sales, drug, drug use, sales, prostitution, prostitution it's just things it was that a nightmare. put people off. In fact, yeah. correct me if I'm safe. wrong, but the bus used to stop you know a couple hundred feet before the bus shelter, so the real bus riders could get on. Well, you know that's 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 something. I I'm a hands-on guy and eyes-on guy, so I went up there and I sat up in the parking lot for about 45, 50 minutes, and I watched it. I watched it happen. I watched the drug deals happen. I also watched a little old lady that had to stand across the street several yards down and try to run across that street to get to that bus in some kind of safety. Right. And that's when we said, that's it. No more, you know, 40 years, it's been a problem. And we called in a meeting with the police commissioner to immediately mm -hmm. eradicate that problem. Police Commissioner Harris. Uh, yes, yeah. and he was, uh, you know, he hit the ground like I did. And we, we, he's we new also. Him. Yeah, great. And he's a good, he's, he's a regular down-to-earth guy that understands that we need to make neighborhoods safer for people. And but was, I was, okay. I was saying, you know, Supervisor, one of the things that Dominic did very, did very well was that because at the town we don't have the policing powers. Right, ta the towns don't exactly. have police uh, in Western Suffolk. Um, we rely on Suffolk County Police. Towns don't have police powers. Right, So right. we can't arrest people or we can't do anything. If someone violates a town code, mm -hmm. we write a ticket and it's returnable a couple of weeks later in 6th District Court. Right. Not mm -hmm. the most powerful incentive. No, and then it's But true. if the police see someone break the law, they put their arm exactly. and they yeah. get arrested. I, and that I was a you. challenge that we had. Yeah. So when Dominic came aboard, he worked very closely with us and he did a great job, Dom, thank in bringing you. in the Suffolk County Police Department and effecting arrests and uh, cleaning up the area. So they, thank you for your help with that area. No, it's my, it's my honor. They made, at that particular, in that parking lot as well as in that bus stop, we, the police commissioner and the amazing men and women in the 6th Precinct uh, did an outstanding job. 40 some odd drug arrests in a week. Wow. For, in one week. One week. And that's what putting your, you, you, you know, rolling up your sleeves about getting into the community and find out what's unsafe. And we don't want to turn any community into a police state, but we want it safe for people to walk the streets and take the transit and, and be able to shop. And I got to tell you, Home Depot has been a great partner. Nice. There's a parking lot where the signs were beat up and the uh, parking lot was full of trash. And the vice president of Home Depot, my office reached out to him along with Councilman Lagercio. And we, we got them to repair all their signs, to clean their parking lot five days a week, to pick up their shopping carts, right, yeah. Mike? Yeah, because yeah. a lot of yeah. people oh. use shopping carts as their personal uh, right. uh, luggage uh, yeah, in, pretty in much, terms yeah. of carrying exactly. things back and forth. And also, as Dominic said, they were conducting business from it, too. Right. Right. So whatever they stole from all these different surrounding businesses, they would cart it out in a stolen shopping cart and then sell it on the street yep. as well. No, it's so. not only drug use. But uh, there was a lot of uh, drugs, uh, and drugs are not free and they cost money. Right. right. And to support a drug habit, unfortunately, uh, people steal things. Yeah. Yep. Um, and 
by cracking down, you're making sure that the burglary rate goes down a little bit. Now, Michael, tell us about the Davis House, which is right mm. almost diagonally across the street from the Home Depot. Uh, that mm. was the early town hall, so yeah. to speak, in the 19th century. People would gather there. Yeah. At, tell us about what happened you know, in Davis House. It's a house. wonderful house that the town has worked so hard to restore it and, and, and make sure that it stays in such a beautiful condition. And unfortunately, we had a situation where there were uh, vagrants that broke Three in. Three break-ins. Yes. Yep. And, there, and what happened was they were basically living in there, but they weren't even taking care of it. They didn't respect yep. it. Uh, they were starting fires. They were defecating there. Uh, they were doing drugs and God knows whatever else was happening. And then on top of it all, they were damaging it. Mm -hmm. you know, so not only were This they, is a historic house. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But they destroyed the inside and then they stole things from it. It was just a terrible thing. So thanks to your help and the Parks Department Commissioner um, Ed Morris, uh, we did include now uh, new security measures. Lights. Lights. lights cameras. Cameras, action. And now uh, <laughs> and, and every, everything um, you know, is, is in, a, in a state where hopefully no, it'll deter any further uh, vagrancy and any further damage to the house. I find, uh, and, and, and what you guys are proving is the theory that if you don't tolerate things, and if you put your foot mm -hmm. down, even on small things, right. it makes a difference. If you mm -hmm. remember in New York City, the broken mm -hmm. window theory, sure. right. where they said, just right. go after the small things, and if you do that well, mm -hmm. larger things are mm -hmm. less likely to happen. Absolutely. And you know what else, Supervisor, too? I think this shows a great... Um, collaboration between mm -hmm. different levels of government. Yep. Right. You know, we've got everybody working together on this. Well, now I want to ask both of you sure. about uh, what's happening on Saturday, April 2nd at 9.30. I, I got to tell you, we, we have a, a, a great event going on. A great event. Myself, Councilman Lagercio have teamed up for the Take Back 25 initiative. Right. And one of the things that we have to do is come together as one Longwood community. Gordon Heights, Middle Island, Quorum, all of those need to come together as one community. To take Long, care 25. Of Long 25. Long uh, 25. So what, we've had this great cleanup that we're scheduling, and it's more than just picking up papers. It's about building you know, uh, relationships between all of the folks in that community, taking pride where you live, saying we're not taking it anymore. You're gonna, this community is going to flourish. We are going to create jobs. We are going to uh, create opportunities. We are going to clean up. And listen, we're going to help the folks, uh, the, uh, Councilman Lagercio and I both agree, the folks that need uh, services and the homeless that want help, we're going to help you. But the folks that want to destroy and insist on selling drugs and things, we're going to show you the door. You are not welcome to this community. We are building this community up collectively together. And we're going to keep going forward until we build it up to where this becomes a, a shopping mecca again, where jobs are plentiful where you can walk down the streets and you can take your wife to the supermarket without worrying about being accosted or aggressively panhandled. This is very important to both of us. Our most basic job in government is public safety. That is our most basic constitutional job. Mike and I are on the same page. We will make that neighborhood safe again. And we will make sure that when you go out and your kids play in the front yard and our kids play in the front yard, that you are safe regardless of the zip code you come from. And that's one of the goals that we share, uh, the uh, councilman and I. And we, we are working, I'm so thankful for, for Mike as well as you, because we are working, as, as the councilman as said, on so many yeah. levels. Yeah. State, right. county, and federal go and state government, and uh, town government, of course, are working. And we're going to continue to work to make this a, a great area to live and work and shop again. And in addition to that, Supervisor, uh, it's, it's very symbolic what, what we're doing mm -hmm. and what Dominic and I are are working on Saturday because we're showing people that not only are we cleaning this up, that we, we're getting down and dirty you know, with the folks, but we're also showing people that this is not the way to live. Yep. You need right. to keep your community clean. You know, and in addition to that, uh, Dominic and I are also uh, working with some developers in the area who are now looking, you know, taking a harder look, kind of like what we did in, in the Bellport area along right. the Montauk Highway right. corridor. So now they're taking a, a long, hard look at it, saying, you know what, maybe I might start investing in this area. Mm -hmm. So we've got some developers that we've been talking to that are saying that they, they have an opportunity here, and hopefully that will come through, through to fruition as well. well. Economic opportunity, Absolutely. creating jobs is important. Right. Right. Now, Saturday, can anyone show up and tell me a little bit more what's going to happen on Saturday, April 2nd? So on April 2nd, we're going to ask everyone to be there around 9 a.m. Uh, a couple of great things, the Longwood School District is going to be there. So if there's a student that needs community service time, we have certificates already. We're going to award you the community mm -hmm. service time for helping clean up. 
if you were Boy from, Scouts. Or Boy Scouts okay. are coming, Habitat for Humanity is coming. Yeah. Right. They, they, and, and Ed, this is not, a, a, it's not a, a partisan issue. The county executive's coming, the speaker is coming. Everybody's coming to, to serve this community. The police commission or the social service commission or the uh, labor department, they're all coming. Wonderful. Uh, right. Everybody is coming to this event. We, Mike and I didn't want to make this a partisan. We wanted to make this a focus on that community, mm -hmm. and that's what we're doing. Well, M Mike uh, and the town will make sure that everyone has gloves. Yep, we have yep. gloves, shirts. Bags. Bags. Pickers. Yep. Yep. Right. Shovels. Yep. Yep. And what's important too is that you know we we've also put the word out there that safety is you know utmost mm -hmm. importance. Sure. So we you know, we worked with people with the uh, the leaders of the different groups right. to make sure that they get the word out. Stay off the street. You know, stay safe. You know, have a buddy system so that there are no injuries and everyone uh, has a good time. Everyone and gets it done. And and this goes on for about two three hours. As long as it takes. Nine to twelve. Nine to twelve. But if it but, takes longer, but we'll you know what? We we will yeah. have a strong police presence. We have buy-in for the police commission as well as uh, the uh, commander Riley from the sixth precinct. Right. They will be there. Fire mm -hmm. departments are all joining in, putting their fire right. police units out for yep. us. We have an ambulance standby. Home Depot. Talk about a great partner, and I'm not trying to build up any one company. Right. Home Depot has given us pickers and people and gloves and bags. And right. They want us to help us clean up the community, too, and that's a great corporate partner. You know, when they want to join, when corporation joins in with government, you cannot be stopped. Right. You know, and what we're going to do is we're going to, if you're from a particular, if you're from Middle Island or Gordon Heights or Quorum, you're going to report to those civic leaders, and they're going to, they're going to divide their area. This is the civic that they're in charge of. They're going to take you and, and show you where it needs to be picked up. There'll be maps and safety equipment and everything you can possibly need to do this job. I'm learning some great T-shirts from my friend Councilman Lagurcio as more visibility. Furthermore, the PBA, Suffolk County PBA, Suffolk County De Department, uh, Deputy Sheriffs, and Suffolk County Corrections are all donating vests to keep us even that much more safer. Wow. So we oh, have a safety great, vest. Yeah. Uh, that with the bright, like, like the, the yellow, yeah, bright yellow, so you can be yeah. seen. Right. Yeah. So, so you can be seen, seen and you're sure. out there. So this is going to be a great cleanup. Awesome event. I'm going so to put excited. in a little plug aside from this. This is a great cleanup. And <laughs> people can do this yeah. in any of their communities, and we will work with people. I'm working with Boy Scouts on the Greenway Trail mm -hmm. in the Setauk and Stony Brook area. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working, uh, Setauk and Port Jefferson area, excuse me. I'm working with a whole group of people. But I'm going to make a plug, which Jack is going to help me make later, for May 14th, because May 14th is the great Brookhaven cleanup. I do. I can't wait for it. I'm so excited. you are previewing it on April 2nd in the Quorum mm -hmm. Middle Island area, Quorum Middle Island Gordon Heights area, and we are going to continue that effort on May 14th town-wide. We have a mm -hmm. huge planned effort for, and I hope and, and I'm, I, I'm inviting you now to what I do is I try to make as many groups as possible. There's about 40, 50 groups out there. Sure. And I'm lucky if I make four or five driving around the town. But I'm going to encourage you, and, 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 and Michael will give you a list of groups in your area, in your sure. district, where you can visit. But we are going to follow up on the quorum thing, and what you're doing is a great thing. Keeping Brookhaven clean and showing respect. Yeah, very important for our community mm -hmm. and not tolerating it. I know communities that I've represented that if you did something where you, they would not have any yeah. tolerance for that. Right. And you know what? That should be for all communities, regardless of income, background, or whatever. All communities yeah. deserve to have a clean community where people are protected. Yep. High quality of life. Yep. Absolutely. So I'm going to let you have the last couple of words because we this is a short little blurb that we put okay. on because we're going to put this on a couple of times between now and April 2nd and maybe even April, April 2nd to encourage people to think about May 14th, which is a great Brookhaven cleanup. Go so, ahead. guys. Well, first off, I knew I had to have mine first because I can never compete with what you're doing with the Brookhaven cleanup, right. but I am, I am very eager uh, for that as well, and I and my staff will be there to support this 100%. Uh, you know, it's just, we, the greatest area in LD7, uh, uh, or one of the greatest areas, I should say, has been that community, and I am raising focused on it, along with my counterpart from the town, and when you have all levels of government working together, it's a better tomorrow for everybody, and we are better together. 
And that's why all of the groups, regardless of your political affiliation, are coming together because this is the right thing to do. This is not election year for me. It's about doing my job. And, and Councilman Lagershi are doing his job. We are there to do our jobs. I'm grateful for the relationship that I have with the town, as well as other relationships in the state and federal government. And we want to, we're going to just keep going forward as a team and making a better tomorrow for everybody. And, and um, thank you for being such a great partner in government in this. And also thank you to all the different organizations that will be working together, as you yeah. mentioned before. You know, these, these civics, the fire departments, the police department, sure. uh, you know, the, the corrections officers, everybody's going to be involved in this. Both our staffs are do, coming out on a Saturday yeah. afternoon, Saturday morning to uh, work with us and get this job done. And Supervisor, thank you for giving us Absolutely. the opportunity. Do we have coffee for these people? Absolutely. <laughs> we, we, take it easy. <laughs> Well, we do, we, we do have water because, believe it or not, Stop Shop and several other folks are donating water and stuff yeah. to our uh, participants. 7-Eleven yeah. has been water very back. generous over the years. Whenever we they have an event here yep. in Town Hall, they have donated it. But thank you for all those who would donate their time right. yeah. or merchandise or whatever to this cause mm -hmm. because it's the cause of our community. Yep. I want to thank both of you for your leadership. I want to thank, thank Dominic for really stepping up to the plate since he's been elected and doing a great job. Uh, I will be with there, putting on my gloves. You'll see me in jeans and not in a suit, uh, and I'll be uh, picking away uh, awesome. at the garbage, and we will make sure that Corum, Gordon Heights, and Middle Island is one of the cleaner areas of our town. Mm -hmm. The people that live there deserve that type of respect. We're going to give it to them. I want to thank you for your leadership, Dominic. Michael, thank you, as always, for all the things you do with your you. staff. And I look forward to seeing everyone <laughs> 9 a.m. on Saturday, April mm -hmm. 2nd, at the Home Depot Shopping Center on 25 in Corum. Come down. Yeah. Let's make a statement. Let's show them that we can clean up our community. Let's show them we all care what our community looks like. And these two gentlemen have done a great job leading the way. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, Supervisor.